this week on Rocks in a Hard Place. You could easily hide something. There's tracks running through the bushes left right at Chelsea. Support weapons flight go looking for hidden rockets. And some information from the locals. You've got a big job on your hands if you're going to try and find everything. That's what we're here for. Support weapons, uh, good bunch of lads, hard workers, like, chimp a little bit, monk a little bit, but at the end of the day we get on with the job, do it better than everyone else. As well as three rifle flights known as A, B and C flights, each RAF regiment squadron also has a support weapons flight. Responsible for the squadron's mortars, the men of support weapons also double up as a fourth rifle flight when required. We're the most senior flight on the squadron. We've got this dual role mortars and we do a rifle flight's job as well at the same time. Because we're not uh, a rifle flight, we're a mortar flight and we all uh, bond together more, I reckon. We're different. We do work a little bit harder than the other flights in, in that sense, like, but same. Same time, we're still doing the same, same job. Once you're on mortars, you stay on mortars. The lads love it on mortars, so I, I love it on mortars. Great, great bunch of lads. I won't leave mortars now. Three in the morning, and the day is just beginning for Ash, Rick, and the rest of the flight. With intelligence suggesting militias are hiding weapons nearby that could be used in rocket attacks against the Cobb. It's up to support weapons to check out an area of interest. We did a heli drop off to search around in that area to see if we can find anything like a cache, see if they've hidden anything. It was an area of interest, thought that would be a good, like, good place for a, a weapons cache. It's like, especially with all the rivers and that, you could bang something in that. You could easily hide something. There's tracks running through the bushes left right at Chelsea. We'll give it 10 minutes, mate. All right, so five o'clock, Bez. Yeah. All right, get your uh, night sights changed. Yeah. After waiting until first light, the lads kit up and begin their search. Just went in, just had a little bit of a look around, like, that's why I call it a rummage, because you're just having a look at things. And uh, you know, you've got a big job on your hands if you, you're going to try and find everything. But that's what we're here for. It was very difficult because of the terrain and all the overgrowth, and it was just junk around there, really, as well. You would quite easily be able you know, put something in though, especially with all the buildings around there. It's good like a good reference point if like someone's put that cash in there and you're like telling your mate about it. Just off the river, cover the mud huts, there's your indication. If he was trying to tell like the rocket team, yeah, mud hut, 20 metres left of the mud hut, dig in. Unfortunately there's not a great deal that we're finding. However though, that's the luck of the draw. With the search failing to turn up anything concrete, the flight wait for their helicopter pickup. However, the mind of Sergeant Ronnie Mails is occupied by more serious matters. Oh, mate, if I don't get my croissants, that's it, you're a f You know that, didn't you? <laughs> I'm f***ing, man, hungry. I reckon I could eat my weight's worth of croissants at the moment. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not long before the Merlin helicopter arrives. With a short flight back to the Cobb, there's just enough time to grab breakfast before the flight are out on the ground again. There was a rocket that was fired uh, towards the Cobb uh, yesterday evening. So we've gone to investigate that. We've been in LinkedIn with the uh, local police uh, at the uh, Iraqi police station, and uh, unfortunately the IPS don't know anything about it. We've then come on a foot patrol uh, into the village uh, to ask the locals if they've heard anything. And as usual, uh, they haven't seen or heard anything. And that's probably to do with the fact that in the evenings, what can happen is when the, uh, the ISF, the uh, Iraqi security forces aren't in the area, uh, and we haven't got patrol out, the militia will come back into the village. Uh, and basically sometimes, similar to Afghan, they'll deliver a thing called a death letter, where they'll know if people are informing the security services uh, about their activities, they'll then threaten to kill them. And that's an ongoing situation uh, in these villages. 
but on the way out of the village, something catches the lad's attention. See the mound to the bottom right of it? Yeah. It's freshly dug soil on top of it. OK, so what you've got here then? what we call markers that basically will indicate where the enemy might be using something. It could be hard or a cache, or it could be a position where it's going to fire rockets from. When you go out on the trails, you just think, like, everything's a marker. And you're like... You'll see a series of uh, scrap metal that's been placed in a line, and then to the right of that, there's a post with a marker bag on it. Perpendicular to this line, you'll see what we call the raid balloon, which is in the centre of the camp. So that's, so that's a good indication that's what it could be, and that'll be annotated on our patrol report. The RAF regiments say they want thinking soldiers rather than just robots who, like, do as they're told and do it word for word. I love it. I love, I love the job. I love the lads. And um, I wouldn't change it for the world. We do our job. There's just no point in rubbing it in people's faces, is there? We know we're good, you know. We don't like to brag about things, show off, it's like... So if you've got something, you don't need to show it off, do you? Next time on Rocks in a Hard Place. No one's on a patrol down here since 07. A flight visit an isolated Iraqi army post before venturing into unknown territory. The Iraqi army have just warned us that uh, keep your eyes open for militia in the village, so we'll see how we go.